Hello, NASCAR Pinties fans. Today I am joined by our most recent race winner, two-time champion DJ Kennington. DJ, how are you? What have you been up to during the offseason? Oh, we've been busy. I mean, uh, what else was there to do except work? <laughs> You're not allowed to go anywhere. So uh, we've just been in the shop a lot, uh, trying to get cars ready, trying to, uh, you know, stay ahead of the game. I think a, a lot of the time for a season uh, preparation uh, to have a good season, it, it happens in the winter. So hopefully uh, we've done our homework and uh, we've had lots of time in the shop. So there's no excuses of why things shouldn't be ready. So you recently announced that you would be welcoming a new associate partner to the series this season, Spark Power. How did that deal come about? Well, my crew chief, Rick Verburn, uh, has been associated with Spark Power for a few years now and uh, running the Superstock, Ontario Superstocks with Spark Power as a sponsor. And uh, they've been helping me a little bit. They helped me go down south and race. Um, they were on my car when I raced the cup race in Martinsville and and so on. Uh, they're local here in London uh, based. And then, I mean, they're obviously all across Canada. Uh, a great company. Um, very fortunate to have them. Rick brought them to me um, wanting to step up and possibly run a late model program instead of running the super stock. So I'm fortunate enough to have a late model here. We've built a brand new WMI car for me for this year for the late model program. And then uh, Rick's going to run the uh, uh, APC car at least four times for me this year. And um, it kind of tied all together. So with bringing that late model program into DJK racing, it brought spark power into the penny series with us. And uh, hopefully we've uh, going to have a long-term relationship and get them the exposure they want and uh, try to get them in victory lane. Well, we love seeing new sponsors in the series. So it is super exciting to hear that they'll be on your car for the 2021 season. But before we get to some of the upcoming races, let's take a look back because you had a pretty impressive 2020 season, as short as it was. Um, I was looking at your stats today. Maybe you can explain this. You drew first place starting position three out of the six races. That's a pretty lucky draw there, DJ. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's nice starting up front. We drew number one at sunset, and that was kind of a waste. Uh, we were absolutely awful. Uh, no excuses except myself. Uh, we tried a bunch of stuff that uh, we thought in our brains was going to work really, really good. And um, when I got behind the wheel, it worked really, really bad. So um, I, I wasn't uh, kind of wasted the pole position there. I don't think I was in the lead for about 30 feet. So um, I, like I say, having the luck of the draw was real good. Um, it helped us at a lot of places. And uh, it's kind of fun. It's exciting. I mean, you know, I, I was getting so used to drawing number one. Then when I, I the last year cast, I drew 16. I was kind of really, really upset. So that was a payback, I think. Oh, yeah. We'll we'll get into Jay Cass because you were super fast there. And that 16th starting position didn't stop you whatsoever. But let's start at sunset. <laughs> you started fourth and sixth there. Or sorry, you finished fourth and sixth there. Still decent starting positions considering the struggles you just mentioned. Um, what struggles did you have, however, going from a prolonged off season to a very little testing and then going straight back into racing? Uh, you know, it, it wasn't, I mean, I think most people or most racers are, um, we we adapt. Um, everybody's done it their whole lives. Most people and, uh, either that or your crew members and people you lean on everybody because everybody's, uh, done this for a long time. So, I mean, there was real, no transition for us. It was exciting to be back. It was great. Um, we had too much time to think, I think, in the off season. So we, we, we tried a whole bunch of fancy stuff that we thought, man, we're really going to show these guys now. And um, it was awful. Uh, we just missed it. 100% missed it. And we tried changing everything between the first race and the second race as much as we could to try to get back to what we knew. And it still was awful. Uh, the second race was almost worse than the first one. But uh, with Rex and, and all the bait and the bang and going up front and just keep, keep trying, keep plugging away at it. We were able to get two solid finishes out of it. And uh, really we didn't deserve either one of them the way we ran. And it was really disheartening. Uh, I don't like doing that obviously with sponsors and so on, but if you don't try things, you, you never advance. So we certainly didn't advance there, but we certainly learned that we shouldn't go in that direction. So um, it, it, was, it was a tough day. Uh, everything was in one piece, which was good. And, we were able to come home, regroup, and uh, get ready for Flamborough. Yeah, considering after the first race, a lot of cars weren't in one piece or were missing noses or quarter panels or like at half of their bodies, pretty much. And also trying to change things in between first and second. You had an hour, DJ. There was only an hour yes. in between the first and second race. You can only change so much. 
Exactly. We did everything though. I mean, we changed springs. The boys worked hard. We changed springs. We changed weight. We changed shocks. We changed the sway bar. We changed everything we possibly could and it didn't change anything. So uh, I, I told him about lap four. I was like, well, sorry guys, this is going to be a long night. So, but uh, like I say, we, we kept fighting. The guys did a great job. And uh, you know, when you have a great sponsor like Castro on board, that's been with me since time. Um, you just, you always have that fire inside and that drive to try to get all you can, because you know, they're watching, you know, that the fans are watching and you know, that people are following and you know, uh, the old adage about race on Sunday, sell on Monday, uh, you still want to make sure you get as much TV time and try to get up as far as you can up front as you, uh, as quick as you can, just to do what you can for your sponsors. So we worked hard. Uh, it wasn't our day, but, uh, that's racing. Yeah. No matter how old you get DJ, you're always going to be the casserole kid. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I, I'll take it. I, I certainly don't feel like a kid anymore. When you, you'll learn. You're still young, but when you roll out of bed in the morning, there's there's things now that I didn't even know I had that that hurt. So, uh, definitely getting on the older side of things. But uh, love the sport and uh, can't wait to get at it again this season. All right, let's move on to Flamborough. It was a track that was added to this added to the circuit for NASCAR Pinties for the first time in 2020, but it is a track that you were familiar with. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, you raced there in late models. I did once the last year before the Pinties race, we ran a, a late model race there um, early in the season. As soon as everything kind of opened up a little bit and there was a race, heck we wanted to go. So uh, we went and ran that late model race, had a great time and we're lucky enough to win it. So uh, we, had, we had a lot of fun and a uh, beautiful little racetrack, a uh, fun racetrack to drive on. And certainly having that experience of getting some laps there certainly helped us when we got there with the Pinty's car. So what did you learn about the track racing Pinty's there? And are you excited to have it back on the circuit for 2019 or 2021? Oh, my gosh. No, 2021. absolutely. It's, uh, it's a great, great facility. Uh, uh, the owners are amazing. Uh, they're diehard racers. And um, for us to be able to go there with, uh, with the Pinty Series and our sponsors, um, it's a great little racetrack. I think if we're going to get lucky enough to have some fans there, we'll pack the place. And uh, it's great racing. It's, it's short track, bumping and grinding. Uh, it's, uh, there is two grooves, but, you know, the bottom groove sometimes uses half the top groove. So it gets exciting. And um, it was fun. Uh, I learned, uh, you know, a, a few things about entry into the corner and that both ends of the track are not the same. And. So you kind of got to try to get your car to work at both ends. You got to give up a little at a, a one end to make it better at the other end. And um, it's fun. It's uh, it's challenging, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Two grooves, one and a half in reality. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. If you're on the bottom, it's one and a half. If you're on the top, you got a half. So it's uh, just the way it works. And it, it's fun. I mean, the guys did a great job. I think we would put on a good show there. Had a lot of fun racing with J.R. Fitzpatrick. Uh, we were battling back and forth and um, it was uh, it was a blast. So uh, I look forward to getting back there again this year and uh, get this Castro Edge car in Victory Lane at a, at a different racetrack. Well, we would love to see you back in Victory Lane, period. Uh, celebrations in Victory Lane with you are always so exciting. Um, so let's move on to Ducasa. You were first in practice. And again, you drew that really unlucky starting position in the first race. <laughs> but battled it back all the way up to fourth. Then in the final race, you drew first and led 99 of the 125 laps and won your 21st NASCAR Pinty Series win. How did it feel winning the final race of such a shortened and shortened season? And what momentum has it given you heading into 2021? Just hearing you say that gave me chills already. So um, <laughs> it's weird, it, it never gets old. Uh, we all want to win races and everybody knows I haven't won a lot of races in the last few years. And it's not from lack of trying. It's not from a lack of effort. Um, you know, it's a tough series. It's uh, there's a lot of good race car drivers, a lot of great race teams, a lot of great sponsors. And um, it's um, it's hard to win. So when you have a car that's that good, uh, like you say, in the first race, we were honestly, we had a huge brake problem in the right front. Um, we came from 16th and took the lead, I think on lap 18 or something and we're gone. And then it, it started to have an issue. And I honestly thought we were losing an engine. Um, it started to get hot and car was slowing down and it started not wanting to turn. And I wasn't even getting down the straightaways fast. And I was starting to get a little angry, uh, you know, cause we finally had everything working the way we wanted it. And then we had an issue and it obviously wasn't the engine. It was a uh, right front brake caliper had seized up on us. And um, so we had the brakes dragging all the way around and the boys found that in the brake. 
before the second race and uh we made the repairs and that and the second race it was it was lights out it was uh, except for restarts i mean i don't know what i gotta do to la Quad to, to get yeah beat him on the restarts he's dang good at it so i'm gonna have to you know go back to my playbook and see what i can find but um it was an awesome day uh great for castro great for all my sponsors uh i have so many people that help us with cim medals and um, like all the little people that, you know, are, are the little associate sponsors that sometimes don't get the recognition that they deserve. Uh, we have the CIM medals and we have, um, Canadian linen and, uh, there's so many, uh, country collision and Brian Cathcart will ride trucking. There's all these people that put into our program to make it what it is. And it was just great for them to be able to, you know, let them know that we'd won and uh, we ran good all weekend. And, like you say, we found a few things with the car. We tried a few things. We worked all year. We, we, we were terrible at sunset. We were decent at Flamborough and we were great at Jacasa. So hopefully fingers crossed going into this season, we're ready to rock and roll at sunset on day one. That progression over just three weekends and six races, put it into a full season. It's we're going to see you in victory lane, hopefully more than once this season. I really hope you're right, Caitlin. I really do. Um, there's a lot of great competition. I mean, three car last year had his stuff together from day one and, um, we all kind of, we got, we caught up a little bit and we were competitive and, and it was a race at the end. And at the start of the season though, they came out of the blocks, they were the ones to beat. And, and I think that's what you got to do. You got to try to come out, come out early and, and, uh, set the tone and get the ball rolling. So final question. You've shown everyone the last three seasons that you are still very dominant and a very strong contender for race wins. But what do you have to do and what do you have to change to win championship number three? Consistency has been there. Um, just overall speed. Uh, we've got we've to keep, uh, keep on our, our race cars, keep on adjusting, keep on. I'm, I'm a little old school. So I get in a, a groove where you don't want to get outside the box a little bit. And sometimes you have to. And when I went way outside the box at sunset, it was awful. So it, it spooked me. So, you know, you kind of go back to again, what you know, and uh, sometimes you just got to try different things. And we worked really hard over the winter, just on, on chassis stuff and trying to make the cars a little bit better if we can. And there hasn't been a lot of rule changes, so there's not a whole lot you can do. But uh, we worked hard at it, and hopefully we can come out of the box early. I think that's the whole key. If we can get at sunset, and you know what? I'm not going to lie. Everybody, I'm not good at sunset, okay? I never have been. I don't know why. It's, it's eluded me, but I don't give up trying, and I keep saying that I really don't like that racetrack. But the best way to change that is to go there and win. Only takes one race to win there for it to change your whole perspective of it. That's right. Well, DJ, thank you so much for joining us today, and we will see you at the racetrack very soon. Thank you. Appreciate it, Caitlin.